Hello young St. Peter's friends. Today I wanted to show you a special piece of art. One of my favorite pictures. It's called The Storyteller and it's by a famous Nishka artist whose name is Norman Tate. Now mostly Norman carved totem poles and he made jewelry but sometimes he also painted. The frog is part of the spirituality of the Pacific Northwest First Nations. And in the Nishka tradition, the frog is a, a spiritual storyteller, a teller of truth and wisdom. And you can see here that the frog has the stories in the round belly, and the stories are coming from the frog's mouth. Now sometimes, Stories are just for fun. But sometimes stories have many layers, even if they're simple. They have connections between the story and our own lives. There are stories like when a king announces that he's looking for the bravest knight in the land, and then he goes out and disguises himself as uh, someone who needs food or is hurt. and the knight that takes care of him is the one that he chooses as the strongest of all because that knight also had a good heart. And so you might remember that story when you come upon someone who is being bullied or who has a need and you know the love that you have in your strong heart and you come to their aid and you, you be a good ally. So stories can teach us even when they're just stories. Stories can help us to make connections between our lives and the tale that's in the story itself and its characters. When I finished minister school, it's called seminary, I went to Manitoulin Island for my first church. And when I was there, I realized that there were a lot of First Nations people on Manitoulin Island. And I decided that I would like to understand uh, their relationship with the land and with God and, and how their history and their spirituality went. So I went to visit a lady named Mary Lou, and I said, do you have a book that I could read about this? And she just kind of laughed at me. And she said, well, you can't read that stuff in a book. So she said, come to our elders conference. We're having one in a week or so, and you would be welcome to come. So I went to Birch Island for the elders conference, and I was the only person there who wasn't First Nations. The only person I knew was Mary Lou. But I sat in the circle of people while others taught, and mostly they, they, they spoke in the Ojibwe language, and I didn't understand that, but they laughed a lot, and I can understand humor and laughter. Some of the teachings were in English, and I understood them, and they even asked me to speak. It was a wonderful, wonderful time. And after the teaching time, there was a feast, and they invited me to stay for the feast and the food was great. After the feast, there was a time with uh, fire and the drum and singing and dancing around the fire. And of course, I was shy and I sat on the bench and I watched other people dancing around the fire. And a young man from Walpole Island came up to me and he said, well, why aren't you dancing? And I said, well, I don't know how to do this. And he said, come on, I'll show you. And so, I went to the fire and to the circle of dancers, and he showed me how to dance in the Anishinaabeg way. And so I danced that evening, and I felt a great joy in my heart. It was one of the loveliest days of my life. And there I was, the only person there who wasn't First Nations. That did not matter. I was respected, I was welcomed with open hearts and minds. It felt great. Now you may know that this week there have been troubles in the world because people who are not white are being hurt. And First Nations people here in our country have been hurt and black people here in our country have been hurt. And this is a great country, but sometimes in our laws and in the ways that we behave, we have not been kind. In the United Church, we said we're sorry to First Nations people for the ways that we 
have hurt them and for the attitudes that our ancestors had and that we have that made them feel different and that hurt. And we said we will, we will pray, we will work hard to change things. One of the things that we have done is listen to the stories of First Nations people, to their pain and to their other stories. They have been very generous in teaching us their ways and their spirituality and it has been a time of growing for all of us. But it's not finished yet. In God's world and in Jesus' way, we are given the job of making the world safe for everybody no matter what color is their skin. When we are kind and when we are respectful and when we stand up for people who are being hurt and when we work together to change the laws that make that happen, then we are doing what God calls us to do in making the world a beautiful place. By our listening, by our actions, we help. And then we help to create stories that are joyful and that create good memories, like my memory of the day at Birch Island. This is a very special place for the church, this place where we've come to say sorry. And perhaps you will be able to come here sometime this summer. It's at Laurentian University and it's in just off the parking lot across from St. Joseph's Villa. And perhaps when you come, you can be quiet for a little while and perhaps pray for more goodness in the hearts of all of us in the church. Perhaps you can bring a kindness rock and place it here somewhere with these stones or around the benches on the outside, like a prayer for wanting the world to be better. And so I invite you sometime this summer with your families to come to this place, the Cairn of Apology at Laurentian University, to remember not only saying we're sorry, but to remember that it is our job and our joyful job to work together to make things better for all people in God's wonderful world. Thanks for coming to Time Up Front. I'll see you again.